Welcome back to the next presentation for the new Path of Fire Gen 2 Elite Specs. What we're going to look at on this one, guys, is the Ranger's Elite Specialization, the Soul Beast. And much like Weaver, this is a very, very big one. The Soul Beast is a Ranger with a unique bond to their animal companion, allowing them to unify with its spirit. They use daggers to fight at close range and enter stances to take on the aspects of wild creatures. When the soul beast merges with their pet, they gain its unique abilities as well as the abilities of its archetype. They may not always fight side by side with their pets, but they're never truly alone. This guy's huge, uh, and it's huge because they've done something pretty ridiculous when it comes to the pet mechanic. Now, as you guys know, throughout the history of Guild Wars 2, rangers have been a class that has been forced to have a pet with it. The devs a long time ago basically said, look, if you want a pet class, then uh, this is going to be it. And if you don't want a pet class, then you should play something else. There was no middle ground for people who didn't like the pets. We've been forced to have them out when we go into combat. And when we saw Heart of Thorns came out and the Druid was revealed to people, many of us thought immediately that that could be an opportunity finally for rangers to get rid of their pet. Loads of people were asking for it and that never came true in the end. I mean it seemed to make sense right? A druid maybe would merge with this pet or something. Well that's what they've done this time. They seem to have heard us loud and clear two years ago and that's what they've now given us. It is the soul beast and as you can see here we get this new button, this Q, which we can click to meld with any pet we like. Now that's, let's just be clear, a really major thing for this profession because the idea of having a pet with a ranger doesn't just mean you've got something running around alongside you, but a huge amount of the design of this class synergizes and plays off of having a pet, okay? So like random weapon abilities will have extra effects that trigger on your pets. Massive numbers of traits affect pets. There's even this entire beast mastery specialization which plays a massive amount with your pets too. And so the job of getting rid of it from a design perspective already is pretty major and the devs from uh, their live stream seem to have suggested from a technical standpoint it's been pretty crazy as well. But they had two years to do it and well, I guess we're about to find out just how well ArenaNet did at the job. Uh, there are a lot of pets in Guild Wars 2. Uh, this is kind of an aspect of build craft and build management that no other profession gets to enjoy. It's also a part of uh, just the game as an RPG in general. You get to run around collecting pets. But every expansion they've done so far, they've added five new ones. Uh, and that includes both Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. Now, you see down here, we got a new Rock Gazelle. We got a new Fang de Bogger. We got a Jaraconda. And then up here as well, we've got a cheetah and we have a sand lion. So they've added five here. They added five with Heart of Thorns with the Wyverns and then a huge base amount of pets also. Every single one of these guys on this list has special new skills and interactions with the Soul Beast because every single one of the pets on this list is something we can merge with to get special abilities. First, let's have a look at our new weapon, shall we? Uh, we can start quite simply. Uh, what we get is Dagger Main Hand. Why they went with Dagger for this spec, I'm not really sure. It doesn't seem to thrive on Dagger in any real way. Uh, and specifically with how you build this, when we talk top level, is it supposed to be condition damage? Is it supposed to be support? What's it supposed to be? This really feels kind of jack of all tradesy. It feels like you could play Condi Soul Beasts by merging with condition-based pets. You could play power ones. You could play tanky ones by merging with bears and things. Uh, and that's kind of funny because specializations in general and elite specializations too are all supposed to be about honing in on one specific mechanic and area of gameplay and that's not really true with the soul beast we hone in on a specific idea a specific theme merging with the pet but there is no one really distinct leaning in my opinion uh, so let's look at the weapon itself um, we've got reasonable flat damage and we have condition damage on there uh, this is kind of a fun auto I will say because it's a four chain auto they really don't do that in the game much so you're going to use the first ability, and if it lands, it will flip to the second uh, leading swipe there. And then if we land that, it will lead to the third, which is Serpent Stab, which will lead finally into Deadly Delivery. So uh, let's start attacking here. You can see it feels a lot like Thief Daggers. Uh, we get a two-target cleave on each one. It's not just single target damage as daggers originally in 2012 were. Uh, but so, yeah, you can see here we go. Leading sw swipe, Serpent Slab, Groundwork Gouge. And then finally, the last attack will inflict everything at once. So it goes vulnerability, poison, bleed, 
Vu and then all three. Vulnerability, bleed, poison, and then all three. Vulnerability, poison, bleed, and then all three. So we can stack regular damage, we can stack Condi damage, and that's kind of the auto. There's really nothing more special going on there. There's no hidden uh, combo fields and things in there. It's just you get to do that on two targets. Uh, moving on, we've got the skill two. This is called Double Arc. Rip your blade through your foes twice, inflicting heavy bleeding. And then your pet's next two strikes inflict poison. So here we see on the two a bit of design that a lot of ranger stuff has. And that's just the user regular ability and your pet will do something extra after that. So I'll show you guys what I mean by that with, for example, axe, right? So if we just equip an axe onto our main hand, this has got nothing to do with soul beast, but we'll see winter's bite. We throw our axe to chill our foe and then our pet snakes attack inflicts weakness. Same thing on our dagger main hand with the new weapon. Uh, we're picking up bleed from our attack and then our pet will be doing a bit of poison. So here we'll attack this mesmer. And you can see I get the four bleed up. So there is quite a lot of Condi actually on the dagger. Uh, the reason they might have put a lot of condition damage on the main hand dagger is because Rangers baseline already had offhand dagger, if you guys remember. So what you're actually looking at me doing here is a dagger dagger setup. These two skills should be very familiar though. So you've got the four which is the little evade into a uh, bleeding strike. And you've got the five, which is a thrown talon you can use for some cripple with also heavy bleed. So I think really they might have just put a bit more Condi onto main hand dagger so that people can feel good running dagger dagger. Uh, but that's about as far as it goes. Then finally, we have the skill three. This is called instinctive engage. And again, more quickness here. You should have noticed how much quickness they've put onto these new elite specializations. Super speed too, there's quite a lot of it. So we're gonna leap forward at 400 range. We get a leap finisher on there and we slash at our foe. We get quickness if we successfully strike. Doesn't this feel almost exactly like the Hollowsmith Sword 3? It's like they did almost the exact same thing. Uh, slight difference here though is that our auto doesn't recharge this faster like the Hollow Miss, uh, like the Hollow Smith saw, but this is using the ammunition mechanic. So we can double cast this quite quickly. So we've got one ammunition right now and we're currently charging up our second piece of ammunition. So we can do double instinctive engage to give ourselves seven seconds of quickness. And that's before we start building uh, boon duration or anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's really how dagger dagger feels or dagger main hand you could complement this of course with any number of other off hands that you like we could be looking so there you go there's one instinctive leap and there's another one straight away you could be running um this with an axe in your off hand you could be running this with a torch in your off hand for even more condi you could be running this with a war horn you actually get quite a lot of options here on uh the ranger and the soul beast does get to play around a lot like that i think that's my favorite thing about an upcoming specialization as well i'll be talking to you guys about that's the spell breaker for warrior who just gets tons of different combos so uh yeah there you go that's the main hand weapon there's really very little else to say there uh moving on We've got our utility skills. So utility skills are stances. You'll remember, hopefully, that the new Elementus spec, the Weaver, also got stances. Uh, and these stances, to me, when I first saw them, seemed really uninteresting, honestly. But there is a trait that plays with them in a very significant way. And I'll just tell you that trait, first of all, uh, immediately, so that we can all have the right mindset as we go into it. It's a grand master. It's called Leader of the Pack. And it says this, that your Stance skills will grant their effects to nearby allies for a reduced duration. So we actually get stances that get pushed out on five targets. This is actually really interesting to think about. Flavor-wise, it's a bit weird to think we can put a stance on someone else, which seems like it's something a person would very much have control over on their own and not something an ally could share to them. But uh, in terms of mechanics, when you contextualize this within the Ranger, it's really crazy because Ranger is already a class that has spent a lot of its time juggling unique buffs on people. Uh, this is why the Druid is so strong, right? It's not because it's a great boon applier, but it's because it applies these excellent buffs that uh, no one else can get a, a hold of, like spirits, like spotter, and of course the druid specific stuff, grace of the land, glyph of empowerment and stuff. And it seems that now that we're going to soul beast, that's still going to be a big part of this profession, because they'll be able to share out these stances that stack on top of the effectiveness of boons, and no one else will be able to ever give. So it really is quite extraordinary. 
Who knows if uh, there'll be too short duration in the end with the ultimate tuning of the game and no one will like these. But of course, the demo tuning isn't something we should really harp on about too much, in my opinion. So let's see what these stances are and always keep in mind that we can give them to our allies. First, we have a heal. Bear stance. So bears are all about big tanky uh, ness and sustain and surviving. So here we heal ourselves with our pet the second we activate it. Um, and that's true for all ranger heals, really. You heal your pet as uh, you pop it. Now, also after this though we get the effects of the stance and the stance does this that we lose conditions when we're in it and every time we lose a condition we heal um so this is kind of like a uh, another version almost of troll unguent so uh, troll unguent is uh, a really big heal but it takes a long time to roll in on us this is also a really big heal that will continue rolling on us but this one requires we're getting conditioned to get our effectiveness out of it, and it will also cleanse conditions. So it's kind of like a weird ether renewal, troll unguent mix style thing. Very useful considering all the crazy condi bombs, scourges, and so forth can be dropping into the game at the moment. And then remember, we can share that to our allies, which is really weird because we're sharing out condi cleanse and healing on people, which is totally the role of a druid. But the soul beast uh, can do it. If you want to play a support soul beast, then yeah, you can share your bear stance out to people and cleanse a lot of condies, actually. If you look at that, that's eight conditions or for five targets around you. Uh, and doing the maths on that, you can see that's actually a hell of a lot of condies if people have just been bombed uh, potentially at max value. So there you go, that's bear stance. Moving on, and by the way, when you share the stance out, of course, the flat heal at the start probably won't be given to people. It's just the rolling heals. So that's bear stance. Uh, I haven't shown you the animation, actually, so here you go. I mean, they're all stances, so they don't really have the prettiest animations. We see kind of a bit of a ghostly bear flare up around us for a second, and then we get all these nice planty growths as it, we're under the effects. Uh, moving on, we have griffin stance. So when we pop this, we get endurance, and then uh, griffin stance will be on us for eight seconds, and our endurance recovery is greatly improved. Then, after that, we also gain might. And when they say greatly improved endurance, they mean 100% endurance regeneration. So this doubles the speed you're getting extra endurance at. I'm actually quite excited about this one. If that stacks on top of Vigor, and if that stacks on top of, like, Fractal Potions and all of that other stuff, this is a lot of endurance you can now share out to your team and yourself. And also, it's great might generation, right? If you give someone else a Griffin Stance, as they evade attacks, they can get might. That's kind of cool. Um, also, yeah, we do get a flat pop of endurance the second we use it. So I'll double dodge here. We have no endurance. We pop the griffin stance. And here you can see just how much endurance we start getting. When you think about stuff like how the Mirage works, and I haven't covered that on the channel just yet, but when you guys see that, uh, the more you dodge on the Mirage, the more you can trigger different things. Uh, I really like this kind of idea of different synergies, of giving people lots of uh, endurance. The devs generally have bloated a lot of endurance at gain in the game, I think, lately. Um, and maybe people might not think it's that worthwhile, but there you go. That's the Griffin stance, and that's how that one's going to be looking. Moving on, uh, we have Doliac stance. Uh, this reminds me so much of Guild Wars 1. If any Guild Wars 1 players are watching this right now, this immediately reminds me of running through the northern Shiver Peaks, attempting to get to Drocknar's Forge, running people for tips um, from Yak's Bend. So Doliak's stance. Gain defensive boons, and those boons are retaliation and stability. And then we're going to remove any condies that impede our movement. So that's Immobe, that's Chill, and that's Cripple. Then, while the stance is on us, this makes us immune to chill and immobe and cripple for its duration, which is six seconds on us or three seconds on our friends. It's also a stun break. Remember, you tend to get a stun break somewhere on the new selection of utility skills. If that pushes that stab out onto allies, I'll be very curious. Let's test it on this random guy as he walks past us. Yes, it does. So we can push stab out and retail out um, on our stun break there. I don't know whether it shares the stun break, um, when we have the Grandmaster trait on. That's actually very powerful. The devs have always been really um, conservative about giving people AoE stab, and especially in the, as high quantities as six. Uh, that's really been the preserve of Guardians for a long time. And we can see that that continues to be the preserve of Guardians from the Firebrand and its new Elite Mantra and stuff. But there is actually some of that capability there, and quite accessible capability, on the Soul Beast, who traits for Doliac stance. Uh, and yeah, this just gives me warm feelies because it reminds me of GW1. Being immune to all those kind of condies is pretty uh, crazy strong too. 
once again, it's just the question of is the duration enough? Uh, moving on, we have Vulture Stance. So this is really uh, an offensively minded stance. So I actually really adore Vulture Stance uh, from a design perspective. So first of all, when we're attacking targets that are over 50% health, we start generating and ramping up might. And that is, of course, most useful to us when we're hitting a target that has a lot of health so that we get the maximum effectiveness of that might uh, when we need it most, right? Then, as the enemy starts getting lower, we actually start inflicting poison. And for PvE players, you probably won't care about this, but hounding someone with poison when they're low on health is awesome because poison reduces the amount that they can heal themselves. And it means that once they've started getting low, you can keep them low. And once they, once you've hit that point as well, you've probably already got a lot of might on you and you don't need the further might stacks. So the might above health, poison below, just works out so beautifully. And then there's something else as well. What you're actually looking at here, guys, is kind of like a Thief Venom when we consider that we can share this out. If you are in a raid scenario and you pop a shared out vulture stance onto your friends, they're all going to be inflicting poison with their attacks. And that's uh, that's going to work out to a lot of poison in a lot of like PvE raiding scenarios. So that is really cool. I like vulture stance a lot. Again, maybe the duration is too low for it to see a lot of use. But with these quick dagger autos as well on the Soul Beast, you notice we easily got almost 10 might. If I'd started attacking a bit quicker, there, or if I'd given myself quickness as we'd started it, we had a lot of might, and then we immediately start stacking the uh, the poison as well. Well, my do that poison was from the autos, but you get my drift. So I really like Vulture Stance uh, from a design level. It's just a matter of them tuning it correctly. Uh, there, there is, of course, one other hidden stance that you actually have to select on. This is the Moa Stance. Who doesn't love their mowers? So uh, here we gain boons. The boons are protection, fury, and swiftness. Three incredibly powerful boons. And then also, while we're under the effectiveness of the mower stance, any further boons we give ourselves last 66% longer. What you're looking at here, guys, in terms of being able to share it out, is massive, massive concentration levels. 66% boon duration is, in terms of raw stats, perhaps someone can talk about that in the comments, in terms of raw stats, a ridiculous number of raw stats. And we're putting that on everyone. Remember how heralds could pop their naturalistic resonance, their F2 ability, and that, that ended up having to get nerfed down to 33% because it was just way too strong and it's still incredibly strong, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, Moa Stance, again, it only lasts a little while. Your friends are only going to have this for 8 seconds out of every 25, but it is also a massive concentration boost. Um, so you can, for example, give yourself a Moa Stance, then pop Strength of the Pack, and this stability you've given yourself now lasts way longer without any stat investment. Also, and it's a pretty easy, pretty quick to pop Swiftness uh, proc for you. Uh, protection on it, these are, these are pretty strong. And so lastly, I had to wait for the cooldown there after that demonstration for you guys. We do have the Elite Stance. Uh, this one's also pretty interesting. We have one Wolf Pack, and it says this, that your successful attacks will trigger a second strike whenever you're in this stance. So when I first saw this, I thought this was going to be some kind of crazy, like, if we use groundwork gouge here, it will actually double cast the groundwork gouge, or it would double cast instinctive engage, and then we could do it twice because of the ammunition mechanic and we get it four times. No, what it does is it pulses a second strike of damage on any strike you do called One Wolf Pack, um, and this is about 400 damage. This is still very, very strong, uh, but it has an interval of half a second. So the first thing I thought of with this, uh, I'll pop it for you guys and see. So with our dagger attacks, you'll see if you watch the numbers here, every, like every now and then we're getting an extra number pop up, and a pretty big number as well at that, and a number that can crit. So if we've got very high crit chance, that will go even further. So this is basically just lots of like death by a hundred, uh, by a thousand cuts. I think that's the best way to describe this. Lots of little buffs for your attacks as they come in. Now that seems to me to have particular synergy with very fast striking stuff. So uh, the ranger is no no stranger to that. For example, we've got Warhorn and Warhorn 4. How exciting is this? Uh, boots, of course, will remind everyone about stuff like Mad King runes. And this could potentially trigger one wolf pack uh, 16 times by having that synergy with Hunter's Call. Uh, that's all really exciting, but the devs kind of just neutered it instantly. And I think that's a shame because if you're not going to combo with stuff like this, where's the fun build craft in it? But uh, to stop it being 16 ticks of the elite stance by casting Hunter Score and using those skills together, they put an interval on it, so this can only trigger every half of a second. So you can get two procs of the stance every second, and you can generally get that through any quickness scenario just with your regular autos and stuff. So that's a bit of a shame, and I'm a bit disappointed in that. 
but hey, maybe it was too strong under other circumstances. And then finally, of course, we can share that out. So that feels a lot like one of the new Renegade things as well, which we haven't quite got to yet. Uh, but one of the Renegade things, or it feels a bit like if you're a blood necromancer and you're sharing vampirism out to the people around you, for the period of time that you pop this elite, you can do this death by a thousand cuts. I like the idea of a lot of these things coming into the game because maybe people will have to coordinate burst all of their elites together during specific burn phases to do lots of extra damage or when they want to nuke people under certain uh, big moments and climactic moments in team fights, uh, but we will see. So there you go, those are the stances. I must say, when I first saw these, I wasn't that impressed, but after viewing them all again with the, the, with the Grand Master, I think they're all a lot more exciting. Uh, I might run some of these without the Grand Master, but it's the potential of being able to share these totally unique buffs that will go on top of everything else that's very fun. Uh, one thing I do hope the devs remember to do is add all of these little buffs onto the uh, training golem in the aerodrome. Otherwise, all those real theory crafters are going to get a little bit annoyed, I do think. Uh, so there you go. That's the utilities. That's the uh, main hand weapon. It's fairly simple so far. But now here's where things go a little bit nuts. We have to talk about the Q. So let's go into our trait panel. And um, let's have a very quick look here. Uh, at our first miner and then, well, let's look at all of the miners. All right So first of all we gain access to stances survival in the desert is enhanced our connection to our pet Granting us the ability to meld with them by entering beast mode And so here in the white text underneath we see this or oh, the gray text traits that affect your pet may affect you differently while in beast mode so Soul Beast has a lot going on, and honestly, a lot of it seems broken and the community isn't quite stood on what means what. Just because there are so many synergies and interactions with the pet that now potentially won't work or they'll have different effects. But I'll do my best to explain it, and I think really this is one of those things. We only have 48 hours to play this on this weekend. It's when the expansion itself comes out, the community is really going to be able to dig their teeth in and iron out all of the kinks. Uh, but so, yeah, well, that's what our queue is, all right? And uh, you'll notice we've got an ability up there. It's called Prelude Lash. And it says that this is a beast ability. And it says pull foes towards you and bind them briefly. So we get an immobilize. We get blind on there, which is written in blue. Now, the blind comes from our beast mastery traits, okay? Uh, which is this one here, go for the eyes. So what the devs have done to facilitate the existence of Soul Beast is any regular ranger will know that you've got a bunch of F abilities to sort of manipulate what your pet does, whether it attacks, whether it hides, whatever, um, and whether you want to pet swap. But you've always had this skill too, the skill to the F2 ability. Now, this hyena that I'm looking at right now, he has several different abilities. Some he'll execute on his own, and one of them specifically I can command him to do. That's Howl of the Pack. And you'll see that this is a beast skill now. That never used to be called a beast skill. As a soul beast, we have access to more beast skills now. The hyena gets his own beast skill, and if we merge with the hyena, we also get a single beast skill, and they all work with the beast mastery traits. I'm sure that you're confused as I'm speaking about this right now, but I promise it will make sense all in due time. I'm actually going to demonstrate this to you guys with a really easy to understand pet here, and that's the smoke scale. So smoke scale's regular abilities are these. He's got smoke cloud, which is our F2, which we can pop. Um, and anyone who played during the Heart of Thorns days will know all about this. It's an on-demand smoke field, one of the earliest or first or only maybe the rangers have ever had. And they can easily blast stealth on their allies using it. So this is what we can activate. And then we've always been reliant on the, U on the AI to trigger any of his other abilities. So he's got bite, and then he's got takedown, and then he has this beautiful hit thing here as well, smoke assault which is like the Revenant attack. So if I make my smoke scale go attack this heavy golem, you might not see because that Holorance is doing all the damage, but he blinks in and he does the big dart thing like a Revenant would on his sword three. We've never had direct control over smoke assault before. Well, as a soul beast, we can hit our Q, merge with the pet, and we get it. And so you can see here, this is now our two ability. And if I run over, we can trigger it, and we can now be the smoke scale, all right? Uh, so you'll notice now that we, well, I'll show you the animation just a little bit here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the smoke scale all the way over to that light golem, and then I'm going to press Q, which it takes us into beast mode. Beast mode is when we merge with our pet. It takes our pet away, and uh, we get his abilities. So what you want to do is you want to watch above my skill bar on the user interface, and also watch the pet itself. So the smoke scale is going to go over to that golem, and when I enter beast mode, he's going to disappear from over there. He's going to become a green blob and fly into me. Ready? Watch. Three, two, one. 
boom, he comes all the way in in this beautiful animation. We get all of this like nice uh, glowing fiery blur around us. And uh, now instead of having swap pet and recall pet and all of that, we have uh, four icons. The first tells us which pet we're merged with, that being the smoke scale. The skill one, the skill two, and the skill three. So the skill one and two we've inherited from this specific pet. Uh, so takedown, we saw this a second ago, remember when we were looking at the pet panel? We can now use our own version of takedown as the F1 ability. And what's really cool about Soul Beast uh, that I was kind of worried the devs might do is I thought that the devs might make it so that when you go into beast mode, it replaces your regular skills, but that hasn't actually happened. I still have my Dagger Warhorn here. I can still do my regular attacks. Being merged with the smoke scale hasn't replaced my entire skill bar. It's just given me new capabilities. I've, it feels a bit like being an engineer with, tool with a tool belt, right? And my tool belt is kind of like what the pet I merge with can do. So here we've got take down. Right? This is a 130 range, two second knockdown with a bit of damage on it. Okay, and we can press F1, and there we just channeled our smoke scale and we knocked that guy down for CC, a bit of break bar damage, and so on. The other skill we've inherited from him is Smoke Assault. Uh, now this Smoke Assault we have is a slightly different version, like it's balanced a little bit differently to the default one the pet would have. Um, which we're just gonna have to accept the devs will have to do otherwise we would get access to some really ridiculous things I suspect But we do get smoke assault and we basically can become like a revenant here We can bounce through all of the golems and we get that beautiful like camera desync and so forth Anyone who's never played a rev or any class except ranger is about to have their mind blown because they're gonna get a ton of new abilities That all use interesting mechanics from other professions. So that's the skill one and the skill two what about the skill three, you might be wondering, Wood Potatoes? And you can see actually that the coloring of the skill three is a bit different. This skill three isn't directly inherited from the smoke scale. It's like a special soul beast skill that does change based on the pet you have, but it's not necessarily from that pet, okay? There are various categories of them. So this here is worldly impact. Remember how we saw that? Uh, before so here we've this is known as a beast ability. This is our beast ability when we're merged We have a beast ability and when I leave the merge the pet has a beast ability So you can keep bouncing between them. There are two beast abilities that you can run now worldly impact is the uh, I believe Let's have a quick look No, no, no it was prelude lash uh, that we saw here, but worldly impact is our special new ability here So if I right-click the minor trait if you see we've got primal cry is one of these new abilities we had a uh, spiritual reprieve, which is there, which is a big healing one. We've got unflinching fortitude, and here's worldly impact. Um, so, depending on the category of pet that you've merged with, you'll get access to one of these new super OP soul beast abilities. And these ones are all very strong. These ones, as they're all beast skills, will all synergize with beast mastery traits and other stuff that would have previously affected your F2. So if I can break combat here, I'll show you guys what I mean. In Beast Mastery, a core range of specialization, we have Beastly Warden. Oh, we already have it traded, that's weird. Well, it should be working. I guess the tooltips are just broken. Mostly, it seems the devs really struggle with tooltip stuff. And once again, here we are struggling with breaking out of combat in this goddamn area. All right, so we got Beastly Warden, right? Beast abilities taunt nearby foes. Not only can we taunt with our smoke scale, but we can also merge with the smoke scale, press F3, and there you can see I've taunted him after we've procced Worldly Impact, which itself is a very, very strong ability. And all of these uh, F3s generally are very, very strong abilities. So uh, you can sort of, the idea of the Soul Beast guys is that you're actually dipping in and out. You can be permanently merged with your pet forever. If you are one of these uh, classic long-term people who's hated pets, you can be forever merged and it doesn't matter. But uh, you also have every opportunity to dip in and out and trigger your beast traits as much as possible. So there we go. We popped our F2. We taunted some people. We're waiting on our um, uh, beast mode to come back. And as soon as we go back into it, there we go. We'll hit Q. We can use the skill 1 to knock him down. We can use the skill 3 to start teleporting. We can use, sorry, the, the F2 to start teleporting around. We can use F3 to taunt again and do a massive chunk of damage. That thing's very strong. And then immediately get the smoke scale back so that the smoke scale can go off and do his thing. And guess what? The smoke scale skill two is back up now. And we can come along and we can start fighting again. Uh, also, don't forget the Grandmaster for the stances. We can share our stances to our pet. And the pet will gain the benefit of all of these different things. And uh, this is kind of the way that the Soul Beast works. Dipping around and um, 
not just always saying goodbye to the pet, but actually trying to make use of as much of it as you can. Now there are some sort of counterintuitive things here, like uh, when you merge with the pet, it's gonna you, you're gonna it's gonna lose all of its boons. Now we have an interesting trait to take those boons from it, but so uh, in some circumstances it's gonna be a bit of a damage loss because you're gonna depower your pet a lot if it was super booned up. Uh, but for most circumstances, I think that that's gonna be the main way that we'll be playing, dipping in and out. So. Um, Let's talk then uh, about these F3s. These are the new big Soul Beast ones uh, for, that we only get as a merged entity. The Smoke Scale on his own doesn't get worldly impact. The Ranger on his own doesn't get worldly impact, but together you guys can use worldly impact. And so there are a couple of different categories of these. Um, if I instead choose a different pet, for example, our uh, Jarakanda here, or Jessaranda, I'm not quite sure how we say it. And when we merge to this pet, um, the combo ability we get from being together is going to be different. As you can see there is Spiritual Reprieve. So this one is a massive heal to us and our allies, and it applies uh, resistance in the area. So imagine sharing out some Bear Stance stuff. Even this has got a bit of support capability on it as a Soul Beast, which is very uh, hilarious to me considering what Druid was. Um, and that's on a 600 uh, radius. So to cycle through all of these, first we've got Prelude Lash, which uh, pulls foes towards us and immobes them. And that's on five targets at once. So you can think of that as like a, a great sword five from the Guardian. Moving on, we've got Primal Cry. This is tap into our Primal Essence and unleash a debilitating roar. It's three packets of damage, flat damage, lots of vulnerability, lots of bleed in an area around us. Here we have Spiritual Reprieve. This is what I just showed you on the, uh, the plant. I'll actually trigger that animation so that you guys can see. And boom, there you go. That applies a ton of resistance out. Very, very cool. And believe me, you want the resistance with all the new Condi that's come into the game. Uh, moving on, we have Unflinching Fortitude. You shrug off all movement impairing Condis and become unflinching in the face of normal attacks. So this puts a special buff on you called Unflinching Fortitude and that says you take no damage from incoming attacks. And it's a stun break. Any pet with this is a super t tanky kind of pet that you can uh, bring into yourself. So I will show you guys here the Black Bear which I can never say without thinking of the office. So here we've got Black Bear. If we merge with a Black Bear, you'll see that the Black Bear is a pet with this ability. And you can see all of this in the pet management panel, Unflinching Fortitude. Um, so we press Q, here's Unflinching Fortitude. It's a stun break so we can get CC'd or hurt or whatever. And boom, we now have this and we're not taking um, any damage at all. That is comboable with the core ranger ability, Signet of Stone, which is basically the same thing as well. Signet active, you and your pet take no damage from attacks. So you can do that. Uh, Signet of Stone can also be popped on a trait, so you can chain all three of these together. Uh, funnily enough, the Black Bear as well, let's have a quick look at Black Bear. So regular Black Bear abilities, we've got our F2, which is Enfeebling Roar, puts lots of weakness out around us, that's pretty good for being kind of tanky, right? Here we have Slash, which we can't really control and they'll just do that. Here we've got Bite, and then also there's this ability here. This has been in the game since 2012, this is just a regular Black Bear ability, it's called Defy Pain. I don't know why it has a range fact on that tooltip, which is really weird. But it says you take no damage for the next few seconds. So here's a fun story for you guys about the history of the Guild Wars franchise. Back in Guild Wars 1, the Warrior class had a skill called Endure Pain that gave it tons of health. And it had an elite version of that skill called Defy Pain, which gave it like a ton of health and damage reduction or something. So those were two skills from the first game. In 2012, when Guild Wars 2 came out, both Endure Pain and Defy Pain made it into the sequel. Uh, Endure Pain was a warrior stance, again. But Defy Pain was kind of this really obscure, weird thing that appeared on bears, right? On the black bear here, as you can see, and the other bears get it as well, I believe. So the juvenile brown bear. So it was an ability your pets would activate and you could never really do much about, but they've always had Defy Pain and it's always been a nod to an old GW1 Elite. Funnily enough, I think the devs themselves forgot this existed in Guild Wars 2 because sometime around 2014, maybe 2015, they added a warrior trait which automatically triggered the warrior's Endure Pain and they called that trait Defy Pain. So there are actually two different things in Guild Wars 2 today called Defy Pain. Uh, one is a warrior trait uh, that triggers Endure Pain, and the other one is this thing here. But the funny thing is now that Soul- and that's always been fine, and no one's ever cared, it's always just been a weird bit of trivia. But now that Soul Beast is in the game, remember, we can take these abilities and use them for ourselves. So if we merge with a Black Bear, all of this is to say that we can pop a Signet of Stone for invulnerability, 
Uh, and we're still vulnerable to conditions, but we don't decapture capture nodes, which is kind of cool. Invulnerable to flat damage. It's not technically invulnerability, which is a slightly different thing. Then we can also chain that into Unflinching Fortitude, the new Soul Beast ability, which gives us even more uptime of it. And then we can use this obscure old 2012 thing, Defy Pain. And we receive no incoming damage from attacks, but we do remain susceptible to conditions and CCs. So that is quite the daisy chain you can do, especially considering the uh, ranger trait as well for Signal of Stone. Uh, very, very cool. I wonder if the devs will rename Defy Pain now that it's come to more prominence because the Soul Beast exists. But if you like the idea of being a very long and vulnerable chaining character, I think that Soul Beast really is pretty far with it. And uh, we get this very cool tanky pet to accomplish that with us. Um, so there you go. That's the way that that works. Uh, what other merge abilities do we get? Unflinching Fortitude and then Worldly Impact, which I've already shown you guys. So yeah, you get a pull, you get a, a, a damage packet and vulnerability, you get something to help you against conditions with resistance there, and you get uh, tankiness basically uh, on flat damage instead, ending finally with Worldly Impact. All of these proc your Beastmaster traits, like Taunt, like I think wasn't there one with Confusion maybe? I don't know, I think it's the weakness one. All of these proc uh, as you would expect them to. The next thing to talk about is another perk of going Beast mode. Um, and that is that when you merge with your pet, you actually gain increased stats. So a lot of rangers have always felt in Guild Wars 2 like they are deliberately gimped and their skills are deliberately a little bit worse and a little bit shorter duration and so forth because they, they're they always forced to have a pet with them. And, uh, you know, the pet is some part of their power budget. And that's fair. But when we merge with a pet and we just become one single entity, you know, we, we, we don't have two things attacking at once anymore. Uh, the devs have reimbursed you that power by allowing you to take stats from your pet, essentially. Now, the way they've done that is with this new effect here. Uh, so depending on the pet you've got, this effect will change just like everything else and you can see why there's so many new things going on here. Uh, so a black bear, uh, which is super tanky and so forth, is a stout pet. And so this is the description that merging with a stout pet will grant us increased toughness and increased vitality. So plus 100 vitality, that means when I press Q I will get a thousand extra health from the bear and that's exactly what you can see there. Uh, there are various different um, designations of what different pets are. So while this one is stout, if we swap to our smoke scale, you'll see that this guy is ferocious. And merging with a ferocious pet gives us power and ferocity. Uh, so that's a power pet. That's a tanky pet. Uh, I believe this is a condition pet. This is a deadly pet. So we get condition damage and precision from this new uh, plant pet that we've got here. I think um, that spider is ferocious as well. We also have another type of pet here. This is the Reef Drake. I tend to think of this as a Condi pet, really, but it's, it's not it's just because of the F2 Sonic Shriek. Uh, here we have a versatile pet, which is 200 vitality and a lot of boon duration. So this is going to be 2000 health by merging with the Drake. And also we get tail swipe that we can actually trigger ourselves now. So basically any interesting pet you've ever thought, wow, that guy's got a cool ability. I wish I could activate that myself. And you haven't been able to in the past. You now can as a soul beast, really. Uh, because that's usually the high power slot that they've given us. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about merging with that I did want to show you guys in this video is the fire wyvern. Because um, I wanted to fly in the sky and drop the big fire field as you, as you do. But that's actually already the F2, if you remember. So uh, rangers could all already do that or druids could already do that which means that because that's the, the f2 see him flying up in the sky like so if we merge and look at how cool that animation is that when he merges from the sky that's beautiful um when we merge instead we get wing buffet right uh, and raiders do very much like this skill by the way because this is a nice little cc here so uh we do get access to that one instead not the flying one so sometimes you might be a little bit disappointed in which ability it is it's just if they did something cool in the past that you yourself weren't triggering you can now do that as a part of your regular skills, and you can take that upon yourself. Uh, there, I will as well show you guys the five new pets that came in this expansion. So let's try and break combat here for a second, shall we? Um, and we'll go through what they do and uh, how their abilities and so forth look. First, we have the Cheetah is new. And we have the Sand Lion that is new. So Sand Lion, uh, his regular abilities are Blinding Roar, which is our F2. Uh, and I won't use that on the Dodge Golem. We'll send him over here. I really like the sand lions, by the way. So there's blinding roar, and of course he's doing a, he's doing a lot of other stuff, weakness and blind and stuff, because we've got him traded. He will slash at foes. Uh, he will bite at foes, and if we merge with him, we get to maul. So when we merge, we will find that this guy's ferocious. We get access to uh, bite ourselves, 
but on a longer cooldown. Again, because they won't give you extra auto attacks, they've slightly changed it. Here we get Maul for ourselves, which is four stacks of bleed, which is pretty nice. And Worldly Impact is their special sort of merge ability there. So we'll swap that out. Next we've got the Juvenile Cheetah. Uh, the Cheetah has Savannah Strike on his F2. So this is a 1200 range leap. All right, and let me just show you how crazy this is. So we're going to pull the Cheetah all the way back here. There's the Golem. So when we pop F2, this guy's going to charge all the way over there, do two packets of damage, and um, is going to cast Swiftness. It says two stacks of Swiftness, which is really weird. But he's going to cast Swiftness on people around it as well. So here we go. Boom. And he like blinks in. Very, very, very cool. Really enjoy this. Uh, also gets a Slash, gets a Bite, and then if we merge with this character, we get a Maul. With the special ability being Prelude Lash. This is the pull and the emob. So I'll show you guys what this looks like. And there you go. You can pull them in. And again, it feels a lot, actually, a lot like what the Hollow Smith version of that was. And um, we can maul here. So there you go. That's two of the new pets. Moving on to some of the more exotic ones from lower, ga lower down. These are indeed, if you guys have been out of the loop, they are references to the GW1 enemies. We've got um, our plant friend here. Uh, who gets access to Jarakanda's Embrace, where we fire a missile that roots people. Uh, then that's on the F2, so I'll show you guys what that looks like there. Beautiful, and we get a root. It's actually like a tangling roots. Uh, they'll charge along and use Root Slap. They also get Call Lightning, which we will be able to trigger when we merge. And Photosynthesize, uh, which restores health, gains regeneration, and removes conditions. Uh, so let's merge with them. This pet is a supportive pet. Uh, as you can see down here, and we can use Call Lightning ourselves on the F1. It's a ground target ability. It feels a lot like a kind of a sceptery thing, and I really like this skill, actually. I really like Call Lightning. It just keeps pulsing. It's going to be five pulses, and remember, because this is just an F1, um, you know, we can go to a slightly, and it's on a pretty low cooldown. Think about when you have Alacrity on that. That's going to go really quick. I think merging with these guys is going to be really fun, right? So we can Call Lightning, and then go about our day doing our other damage and stuff, and it will keep rolling those Lightning Strikes as we go. So that's very fun. The F2 is photosynthesized. This gives us health. This is not um, AOE, but this does is a double condi cleanse for us and gives us health. It's very strong. And finally, spiritual reprieve. So lots of cleanse, actually. I really like this. I think merging with this pet is going to be great, and we'll see a lot of people doing this. Um, so loads of resistance. We've got cleanse. AOE resistance, actually, as, as it is. And then we have the other pet as well. This one's the Aboga. So uh, the F2 on the Aboga is fang grapple. We spit a fanged projectile to pull in our foes and that's on 1200 range as well by the way that is like an obnoxiously long pull i was joking on a stream where i was showing this off that if you're a longbow ranger that loves using your longbow four and knocking people away not only can you knock people away with your longbow longbow four but you can also execute your ibogas f2 these days to uh, pull people from crazy distances when you're out in open world just to annoy people so look at this pull ready that's a very strong pull. Here we got this beautiful animation here. Uh, this is what uh, we'll have access to in just a second. They get consuming bite. Bite foes dealing additional damage for each condi afflicting anyone struck. Uh, any necromancers watching this video might recognize this. This is very close to the old Scepter 3, back when they didn't know whether it was a power weapon or a condi weapon. Uh, but that's actually three targets. So if you have loads of enemies with loads of condies, consuming bite will actually be pretty uh, pretty gross damage there. It's already on a thousand baseline. And then, what, they can have another ten condies on there? It's a big hit. I'm excited to see how consuming bite works. And speaking of applying a range of uh, conditions on a foe, here we got Crippling Anguish. This is a reference to Guild Wars 1. A Mesmer skill from Guild Wars 1, except this, uh, which was a big degen and a snare. This one doesn't really seem to do any of that, and I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest. Uh, but this is a little bit of confusion, a little bit of torment. Um, and then lastly, we've got Narcotic Spores, uh, where we spit a glob of confusing spores at a foe, inflicting confusion for a while at that location. I actually think this is the ability you saw got placed on the ground. So when we merge... We get access to those uh, three on the right. We've got Crippling Anguish, which is some Condi. We've got Necrotic Spores, which we can spit down on the ground, which is more Condi. We've got our Primal Cry, which is the big debilitating one. We get all of these Condis, and then we can demerge, and we can let our pet use his bite ability, his consuming bite, and potentially do a ton of damage. Like, the Aboga's just got so much synergy built into itself. I wasn't even trying to put a big range of Condies out there, but you saw I did. Uh, so I really think that's going to hit like a truck, especially if you've just uh, cast, you know, Call of the Wild, your elite, and given it 25 might and all of those things. Big, big, big spike of flat damage, and I'm, um, I'm looking forward to seeing if people can pull that off very well. So uh, that leaves just one more pet from Path of Fire, one more pet that's been added to the game. 
And that is this one right at the bottom. This is the Rock Gazelle, who I've not really looked at before. So what have we got on the Rock Gazelle? Uh, we have Head Toss. Toss your phone to the air. Oh, I think I have seen this guy, actually. So we get a launch um, on, on a single target. That would be great on little downstate bodies to interrupt people and so forth. Here we've got Head Butt, where we bash our target. We've got Kick, and we've got Charge. Now, the Charge is actually an inherited skill. So this is a daze. Look at the flat damage on that. 4,000. This must be the bugged one. This must be the grossly ridiculous one. Charge is ridiculous. 4,000 damage. Uh, so let's send our gazelle over there and see what he does. And it's got a daze on it as well. There you go. Look, 5,000. That wasn't that didn't even crit. Okay, that's gross. So that's probably going to change, guys. Uh, but here we can merge. We get our own version of charge now, which has much, much, much less damage. This is like our own bull's rush, basically. A soul beast that has... Uh, uh, sorry, a ranger that has uh, bull's rush. We've got kick. And then our special ability on this one is, again, Worldly Impact, which is another big... I really like Worldly Impact. I think this is going to be so cool. So, yeah, you can merge with the pet, then drop it out, swap, use the F2, swap to the other pet, then use that F2, then merge with this one, and then take... Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun seeing how you can dance around in those different things. Uh, and so there are other synergies as well. I'm obviously not underwater, so I'm, I'm not exactly showing you. But uh, you can merge with underwater pets. I showed off on a stream recently. There's all kinds of fun active effects and uh, different things buried in this system that you guys will probably want to play with and see. I think that's a pretty comprehensive look, at least at all the new merged abilities. All the old pet abilities that are in the game basically are available here. Uh, and so we don't have to show off all of those, just the new ones that have been added, which I think I've done here on the five new Path of Fire pets. And hey, we've already been talking about Soul Beast for an hour. So, um, with all of that said, there is one more side of the story, and that is traits, isn't it? So, let's have a little bit of a look here, and this will show you some more of the interesting synergies that you can do. Once again, we will take the middle line first, uh, and we've already talked a bit about this. So, first of all, the miners. We've got Furious Strength. We do more damage when we have Fury. So that's nice. Um, Fury seems to be a big thing for the Renegade. I don't see why it's such a big thing for the Soul Beast. Uh, they don't really have too much Fury application, but there it is. Um, I mean, Ranger by default has a lot of Fury application, but not necessarily the Soul Beast on it. And then we have the Grandmaster Miner. I actually don't really like this much. It feels really weak compared to what some of the other mi Grandmaster Miners have been in this uh, generation. But so it's called Twice as Vicious. Maybe they can affect the numbers and things. But so disabling a foe increases our damage and condition damage for a short duration. Now, I've just equipped an axe in a cheeky little cut there. Um, so we for four, if we disable someone for four seconds... Uh, after that, we get 5% damage and condi damage. 5% isn't really that much for such a short window. Um, and so you might wonder, does it stack intensity or whatever? And it doesn't really. So I'm going to throw this axe. It will boomerang through them both. We only get one stack of the thing. Um, so I'm not so sure really on that one. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to maintain and only for a 5% buff It doesn't count on you know soft CC's like applying cripple and stuff uh, So maybe there's other ways to maintain that quite high Maybe immobilize counts and you can use entangling roots or whatever uh, Perhaps people have a little bit no more knowledge than that, but it's kind of a weird uh, Minor I don't actually think that there's much of a through line on these miners either None of them really seems to have anything to do with the actual act of merging they're just sort of generally damagey things, but hey, there you go. Um, so, let's look at the traits themselves. We already saw the Grandmaster, leader of the pact. We know what this is, the share stance. However, also in the middle, we get Essence of Speed, which means that if we ever get Quickness, it bumps up the duration of all the other boons we have on us by a further two seconds. So this is going to be really cool to demonstrate. This is a lot like using Sand Squall on a Warhorn with the Tempest. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Strength of the Pack and give ourselves a ton of boons. And then I'm going to use my skill 3 on the dagger, and we'll look at the duration of the boons. They all refresh up again. Do you see that? For another two... That gazelle is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> um, they all refresh up again, right? And then we can do it again. And so you see, we actually get... The, because of the ammo mechanic on instinctive engage, that's quite nice for actually bouncing these boons and keeping them on ourselves for a little bit longer. Uh, so that's quite a nice little trait and uh, very familiar to me as uh, someone who's played a lot of Warhorn Tempest. And so then uh, lastly we have Live Fast. Now this feels a bit broken to me as a lot of Soul Beast seems a bit inconsistent. So here it says using a beast ability will grant you offensive boons. So we already established the beast ability is the F2 from your regular pet. 
or it's when you're merged, it's the special combination attack, like Primal Cry. So you can see Primal Cry here, now that we've got this traded, is now even stronger. Not only is this a big pulse of damage that applies Torn and, and Weakness and stuff because of all those traits, it also now gives us Fury and Quickness, and that's incredibly strong. Primal Cry itself is a great ability in the first place, and now that we've got this, you know, we can, uh, you know, un unload extra damage and do whatever we like because of all of this extra Quickness. In fact, if you look at the amount of Quickness that I've managed to maintain on myself, that's brilliant. And obviously this pulse of Quickness will help us with the middle trait too to bounce the existing boons we have on us for even longer um so that's all well and good but the thing is these f2s are beast skills too but these aren't giving fury and quickness so i don't know whether the devs have talked about this but this is clearly broken it's a beast skill the trait says beast skills give fury and quickness and that's kind of not worked so maybe this is just something that's a bit weird and inconsistent because the soul beast has added so much to the game uh but uh so far that interaction doesn't seem to work um, but okay, so there you go, that's the middle line. Very much to do with quickness, and then a Grandmaster that does something very interesting with your new stances. Let's take a look at the top line next. And I don't think there's too much of a through line on this. Uh, the top line starts with probably my favorite Soul Beast trait, that is Fresh Reinforcement. Entering Beast Mode grants us the boons that affect our pet. So any Ranger worth his soul already knows that you can pump a ton of boons onto your pet through various things. This elite itself is a great example. Strength of the pack. Let's try and find a nice empty area of golems. Strength of the pack is an elite that means whenever you strike while under the effects of it, you build might for your pet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to target my gazelle here. I'm going to cast strength of the pack. And then I'm going to use a war horn to summon birds to choose someone's face. And every single time the war horn, birds, attack the golem, it's going to put might on the pet. And the pet is going to instantly go up to 25 might. So you ready? And we'll use the Warhorn 5 as well. So here we go. So watch his buff bar. And here's our Gazelle. Our Gazelle's at 20 uh, stab and a ton of might. Now if we merge with him at the last second, check out our bar. 25 stab, 25 might, insane amounts of fury, and loads of swiftness. Yes, that's 25 might still on me with no concentration, without using Moa Stance, which if we propped before all of this, it would have lasted for ages, and a full stack of 25 stability. Because what we did with using our Elite there was we stacked a ton of boons onto our pet, and then we ate them all when the pet came into us. The only downside is that the, the Soul Beast doesn't have a trait that does the reverse. I would love it, and maybe even if this trait did it, it would be worthy of a Grand Master, actually, if they added this functionality. I would also love if when we demerge, our pet gets the boons that were on us, and that would kind of fix one of these problems where you're kind of stealing a lot of boons and deleting them when you take them from your pet. But uh, we at least get it in that one-way direction. Maybe having it both ways, like I say, that would be a pretty cool... Uh, um, elite uh, Grandmaster trait that we could pick, but there you go. So fresh re reinforcement, very fun, lots to play with there, and I'm curious to see how people go with that. Here we have a very simple trait, second skin. Uh, as you may have noticed, in Path of Fire, they opted to not bloat the game with new types of conditions and new types of boons. We already have a lot of boon and condition spam and, and user interface bloats and stuff that people might not like too much, but I'm generally of the opinion the game can have new boons and it can have new conditions, it's just they need to rein in people's access to it so it's not all flying around all the time. A candidate for a potential new boon in Guild Wars 2 would be exactly what Second Skin is doing here. Second Skin is this, that conditions inflict less damage, while we have protection. So conditions inflict 33% less damage. This basically makes your protection work against conditions as much as it does against flat damage. By default, protection is 33% less damage, but only flat damage. Second skin adds a second skin to it. It makes it reduction from both ends. Now, I think that could have been its own boon. It seems that the devs, by implementing a trait like this, I think they're sort of saying to the audience, hey, there aren't going to be, we're not really going to go in that direction. Uh, instead, this will just be a trait that we give to this uh, this elite specialization. And a lot of the Gen 2 ones have Condi damage reduction, especially when we get to Renegade, we'll see a lot more of that. So there you go, that's second skin. Not much of a through line between these, except the fact that we're buffing ourselves up a lot. And then finally, the Grandmaster. Eternal Bond. So while in beast mode, if we would be downed, we instead fall out of beast mode and we recover our health. And you don't actually get that much health from this trait, but you do get protection after it. So that's 3,900 with no healing power. Maybe that's good. I actually like them to heal for very little unless you invest in a bit of healing power. But uh, any warriors watching me right now, specifically berserkers, will uh, be more than familiar with what this is like. Hopefully I can find a target to kill me. Here, we'll, we'll let this Mesmer kill me. So I'm going to merge with the gazelle. 
And I'm just gonna let this Mesmer kill me here. And when I would die, when my health drops to zero, you'll see I dip out of beast mode, my gazelle comes back, and my health goes up a bit. The gazelle won't come back dead or anything. Um, and it will just start fighting. And that's uh, essentially the way that this works. This is actually a lot stronger, though, than the warrior version of the trait, or the berserker version of the trait. Because for berserker, you can only be in berserker stance for a while. You have a lot less control over it. With this, you can be in it for a long time. So there you go. Uh, we would have died, but instead we stay alive. I actually sort of don't like traits like this, I must admit, in the game. I don't like passive, save my ass stuff that people don't really have to think about or do. And I do think there is a lot of quality of life on this one. So maybe that's another reason why I'm happy that it doesn't really heal you that much. It's just a nice little final chance to stay alive um, right when you proc it. So there you go. Uh, that seems very much inspired by the way the Berserker worked. And uh, with that top line done, which is definitely more about sustain, let's have a look at the bottom one. Start, we start off with Unstoppable Union. Uh, this is that entering beast mode will break stun and it will cause our attacks to be temporarily unblockable. Again, Berserker has a trait like this. When you go into Berserk mode, it breaks stun. Uh, though Berserker doesn't get this extra thing here of our attacks being unblockable. Uh, and that's crazy. If you can find a pet that's got a really big, nice nuke on it, um, and now you can trigger that unblockably, that's insanely strong. Don't forget, of course, that we already have stuff like Worldly Impact. Any pet with Worldly Impact, of which there will be a lot, you can now unblockably use Worldly Impact, which has a massive base damage hit on it. Anything you want to do will now be unblockable. So you can unblockably summon a, 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 a Feast of Birds to chew someone's face off. You can unblockably use any high power greatsword hit that the uh, Ranger has access to. It's all unblockable now. And that's actually a scary thing to put on a class, I think. It's like a signet of uh, strength. Uh, for Warrior, which was an entire utility skill you now just get for moving into beast mode. There's going to be a lot of ways to abuse that. Moving on, we have Predator's Cunning. So this trait is steal health whenever we apply poison. It also says that it's unblockable, which is kind of weird really because the, the attack that inflicted the poison in the first place will probably get blocked, thus meaning the trait wouldn't trigger in the first place. Anyway, uh, what is quite cool about this is there is no internal cooldown on it, and so it synergizes with any kind of poison you've got on the ranger, which if we look at our old friend Shortbow, we certainly have a lot. Poison Volley, for example, this is five arrows all at once. Each will uh, inflict five uh, one poison and uh, all of that will trigger all at once. So I'll show you in the combat log. If we come up to this guy, we point blank shoot him in the face. Not only do we apply all of the poison, but if you have a look at my combat log here, we go damage done. Uh, you will see stacked all at the top before we use it. You got predators cunning, predators cunning, predators cunning, predators cunning. Pred now the thing is, it is life steal and life steal damage, life siphon damage in Guild Wars 2. They put horrible coefficients on, so don't expect to be able to play a really heavy like power build and then get lots of scaling out of this. Uh, that's still not much of a thing in Guild Wars, but it's nice. And I think that uh, if you use stuff like the poison trap, uh, maybe some of the pets, maybe there's even a pet ability, maybe the spiders for example, uh, which drop little poison fields as far as I remember. You might be able to get a little bit more use out of them by uh, merging with the spider. I'm also quite curious if you shared out a vulture stance, which means you apply poison with all your attacks when they're below 50% health. If you did that, you would trigger this trait. And what about if you shared that to your friends? Would they also trigger this trait because it's still technically you applying poison because it should be coming from your condition damage value? The testing on that would be really weird, but that's also... And then the final Grandmaster for the Soul Beast is Oppressive Superiority. Now, this is a fun one uh, that needs to be worded a little bit better to be clear to the audience how it works. But so listen to this. We do increase damage to foes who have less health than us. And then also conditions that we apply with less health than us also last longer. So this is uh, working sort of double time. We get, if we're a Condi build, we like this. If we're a flat damage build, we like this. Uh, I think that all the real theory crafters will have been adding up all of the damage increases. So you've got 10% there, 7% there, 5% there, and the more the better essentially is what you're looking for. Um, but so one thing that might strike you about this that's really odd, if you're a raider or someone who does a lot of PVE, even open world stuff, even if you're a casual PVEer, this might seem really weird to you, right? Because a big enemy that scale a lot in open world and stuff and in raid bosses, they have millions of health. And so let's listen to that again. Do increase damage to foes who have less health than you. Well, by the time they have less than 16,722 health or whatever, you know, even if we build a ton of vitality on this character, uh, by the time they're below our health, that's, there's going to be like half a second before they're dead because they just take that much damage that fast. They have that much health. So will this trait ever work or is it purely PvP minded? So uh, this was a question on many of our mind when pe people mined this originally. 
Um, so I think people have confirmed that when they say more or less health, they mean percentage wise. So if you're at 90% health and your target is at 70% health, the trait is triggering for you. Now, the boss you're fighting might be at 10 million health when he's at 70%, but as long as you're at a higher percentage than him, you're A-OK, -okay, which you probably will be because barrier and stuff is in the game now, which means you're not even likely to use your scholar rune and so forth. It's, you can almost look at this like a scholar rune. Right? As long as you're at 100% health or, or quite high up. Uh, in fact, it's a lot stronger than a Skull Room. Just before they're almost dead, you can be on the cusp of death yourself and still be getting massive bonuses there. So I think you'll find a lot of Soul Beasts in PvE obviously end up running this one. But there's some really nice things here. Uh, and uh, pay attention to the trade-off there, though, of course. Um, you lose 10% damage if you're going to be sharing stances to people. So whether it's worth doing it or not is going to be quite curious to see. And some people might really not like that juxtaposition. But, uh, but there you have it. And there you go, guys. Really... That's Soul Beast. So we got a dagger, we get to merge with our pets, we get a ton of new abilities. There's five new pets that have come with Path of Fire. We get all these shareable active effects, and it really does. I mean, you guys have seen it all now. Do you agree with me that this feels like a jack of all trades kind of elite specialization? The first real jack of all trades elite spec that they seem to have put out there? Or is my entire understanding of how they do these probably a, a little bit flawed and we shouldn't think of it in this way at all? Uh, well, there you go, guys. I think that there's really a lot there to chew on for any ranger, especially any ranger who wanted to play without a pet there are some odd bugs and things by the way i think if you merge with a pet at the moment and then you turn it off and you you, you know you, you leave you can destroy your pet permanently so you can be a regular ranger in the demo without a pet permanently in fact you can even go be a druid um, which is the Heart of Thorns specialization without a pet and you could do stuff like that uh, even while in combat. That's probably all going to go away after the demo. And I think that the optimal way of playing is, yes, you get to leave your pet behind for good if you want, but there will be some darting in and out. You'll dart out, you'll pet swap, you'll use F2, you'll go back in and uh, fun things like that. So there you have it, guys. That's the Soul Beast. Let me know what you think. Let me know uh, what interesting build craft you've come up with on stuff like Predator's Cunning or sharing stances out, interesting applications so that other people can be excited about when they read it down below. And until next time, guys, I will see you very shortly. Hope you've been enjoying, and hope I can get the last of these out before the demo's over.